Welcome to the Book of Remembrance. This message was received from the Lord Jesus on February the 15th, 2016. The title of the message is The Ark of Abundance. And the Lord Jesus began, Persistence is key to victory. When you have a goal that you are pursuing passionately, giving up is not an option. This principle applies both in the physical and spiritual world. When your faith gets tested, you must endure to the end in order to reap its fruit. Faith is not a physical principle. It is spiritual. That is why it is one of the fruit of the Spirit. My children, your faith will be tested many times during your lifetime here on earth. You must hold on. You cannot give up, however hard it gets. As long as you know that you are walking in my will, stand firm, immovable. Do not waver to the left or to the right. Keep your focus and ignore all distractions. I allow the testing of your faith because it is an opportunity to grow, to grow in what you ask, to grow in your trust in me, to know that I am with you and for you when you're walking in my will. I do not expect you to have faith in yourself or to put your trust in other men. No, walking in faith means trusting in me only. Believing me even if everything and everyone around you is contrary to you. Though the whole world turns against you, yet if you know that you know that you are in my will, hold on to your faith, keep on trusting my words to you and believing in me. Be persistent and very courageous, for as you keep on standing, your reward draws closer to you. I am well pleased by those who trust me and do not waver in their faith. If you keep your gaze on me and feed your soul my word and nourish your spirit in prayer, praise and worship, I will accomplish that which I have promised you speedily. Yes, it is true that some promises take time to come to pass, but they do come to pass. By keeping your gaze on me, you lose sense of time and instead focus on pleasing me. Suddenly, one day, the word that I spoke into your life will bear much fruit. When you least expect it, when you are busy in my field harvesting souls, when you have essentially forgotten about it, that is when I cause it to come alive. Therefore stop focusing so much on the word and instead focus on me, for I am the sower and the one who calls out to the seed to bear fruit. Keep on working in the fields, faithfully serving me and bearing much fruit. Do not worry, your time of bearing fruit is here, the time to collect your harvest is here. The time of increase and abundance is here. Not only will your harvest increase and your fruit ripen, but it will be abundant. It will be more than sufficient. It will be overflowing, more than enough, too much for you to carry by yourself. You will have to call others to help you bring in your harvest, for it will be too much for you. Just like Peter and my disciples had to ask for help with their nets after I blessed them with an abundance, you will go looking for someone to help you carry your fruit. It will not be hidden, for when I bless my people, I bless them openly. Others will look at your fruit in astonishment, for it will not only be abundant, but blessed throughout your generations. I am delighted in blessing my people. I delight in overwhelming you with my blessings. I am not a small, poor, impotent God. No, I am a mighty, abundant, rich God. And when I bless, I bless like a great king should, with much abundance, withholding nothing. My children, many of you will not enter into my abundance because you have been convinced and you have convinced yourself that it is not my will that you prosper, even as your soul prospers. If you are not open to receive my abundance, then you will not receive it. When I blessed Israel with Canaan, I did not give them a dried out piece of land. No, Canaan was indeed a land flowing with milk and honey. It was a fertile land with abundant springs of water verdant vegetation, and ample rainfall. The Israelites, once they entered Canaan, got used to harvesting thirty, sixty, hundredfold more than what they had planted. Their land was pleasant. It bore oversized fruits. It rained in the right seasons. The livestock was fat and multiplied exceedingly. They had such an abundance that even the poor had enough to eat. The poor, like Ruth, would glean behind the harvesters and collect enough food to feed their households. They had servants and slaves and much gold. Yes, Canaan was a beautiful land when I gave it to Israel. 
I am still the same God who still desires to bless his children with abundance. If I could bless Israel with abundance under the old covenant, what can I do for my children who are under the new covenant? I desire to do the same and much more. But one thing stops me. Your greed. The world has made wealth a god. People kill, steal, and maim over mammon. They rise up early to acquire it and stay up late to safeguard it. It has become an idol and a god in man's heart. You have let your greed for wealth rob you of my presence. I am no longer preeminent. No, you have given my place to wealth and lust for more wealth, power, and positions of authority. For this reason, I have called a drought in your land. Only those who put me first, who know the use and place of money, who are sold out to me, will receive my blessings of abundance. For I will not bless a greedy person with wealth, lest they lose their soul over it. My children, who can I trust with my abundance? Who can I count on to use it wisely? Who can I count on to honor me above it? Who can I count on to give me praise for it? Not many will enter in through my gate of abundance, for not many can be trusted with my treasury. It is reserved for those who have matured in their soul, who put me first despite what comes their way, one whom I can trust. Examine yourself. Do you qualify to receive my abundance or should I keep on allowing the drought to go on in your life? How long will you languish in the famine? Remember in the days of Elijah, I only found one person to trust with my abundance, a foreign woman, the widow of Zarephath. Everyone else was disqualified. They were too busy a whoring after Baal and Ashtoreth that they forgot me. Who can I trust? My hands grow weary of bearing my abundance. It is time for me to put it down. Where will it rest? For wherever it rests, it will bring much comfort and will bear much fruit. Remember when the ark came to rest at the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, during the reign of my servant King David. That is First Chronicles 13, 13 through 14. Remember how I blessed Obed-Edom's house? Where will I rest my ark? It is time to put it down. But where? Who can I trust with it? For wherever my tangible presence is, there is my abundance and goodwill. Examine yourself. Do you qualify? I hope so, for I have much work still left and it must be completed before the rapture. My abundance is not just for you, but for the growth of my kingdom. Selah. I am searching. I am going to and fro to find a place to lay down my abundance. Amen. And that was the end of the message from the Lord Jesus. Be blessed, beloved.